Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today's video is all about masking fluid and what it's used for with watercolor. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so today we are talking all about masking fluid. So I have two different types of masking fluid here. There are a bunch of different brands and types. Um, I have used the Winsor & Newton masking fluid just like this before. I just bought a new one because mine is very old. Um, and then there's also this one that comes in a pen form, which I used, I wanna say like six years ago. I can't remember how well it worked, but I thought we'd give this a try as well too today. So what I also did is I purchased this set of brushes from Amazon. They're very cheap. I think it was like $11 for this set of detail brushes because when using masking fluid like this one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have designated brushes for your masking fluid. You do not want to use your good brush because it will ruin them. So buy yourself a cheap set of brushes that you're gonna use just for your masking fluid and you should be good. So I'm gonna be using these, but I do wanna test this pen out first. So first of all, what is masking fluid? Basically what it does is it preserves the white of your paper so you can save them for highlights. So you guys know when working with watercolor, it is a transparent medium, so that means that any kind of like white that you necessarily put over top, like there are some white watercolors, it's not gonna be as white and opaque as if you were to leave the white of a paper. So this is really good for marking out areas that you wanna preserve that white. So little highlights, maybe in raindrops or, you know, um, flowers. It also makes it a lot easier, say if you wanted to do like a flower with a blurry background, instead of having to paint around this sketched out flower really carefully, you can apply the masking fluid down, which I'll show you, and then paint the background so it's nice and easy. And then when it dries, you can just lift it up and you have that white paper underneath. So you can put your watercolors where you need them without kind of messing with the integrity of the color if you were to layer them. So this is an extremely useful tool. I don't tend to use masking fluid a lot, but I do at times. So that's why I'm gonna show you today. The one tip I will give you is to make sure you test out your masking fluid on your paper before you start your painting. I have had different papers not work well with a masking fluid. And when you start to lift the masking fluid up, it actually tears the paper. So make sure you test it out on your paper first. I just have this little scrap piece of, I think this is arches. So we're gonna test it out on this little scrap piece first, and then I will show you how to use it through a painting. So first, let's just try this pen out first because I'm curious, it's been a very long time. So this is the Molotto, Molotto, I don't know how to say the name, um, Art Masking Fluid Liquid. It's a pump marker, so you shake it really, really well. And the only thing it says is that it's easy to peel off and remove the mask within two days of the surface. So it doesn't say a drying time or anything, but I assume that you let it dry for a while. So it's one of those pump tips. So you're gonna need to pump the masking fluid. I can see it coming down. And let's try and write something. This is the reason why I got this one um, years ago, I remember, is because I was learning how to do calligraphy and I saw someone use this in a Instagram post and they wrote something and then painted watercolor over top and then lifted and I was like oh my god that's amazing so <laughs> let's just write something let's write summer so I don't know if there's like a specific way that you should apply this how much if you should go over it leave it a nice light layer I, I'm not as familiar with this one but let's just Right, summer here because it is the beginning of summer. So yeah, like I wonder if I should make it a little thicker or what. Also, I'm just not sure about the drying time. Okay, my, my writing's not the best right now. I'm curious of how this peels off because you'll see with this one, this kind of feels more like a rubbery consistency um, when you peel it off 
and it just feels easy. This one, I'm not actually sure how it's going to go. So this one is quite a, a liquidy liquid. Now, a tip that I've heard from other artists is that before you dip it into the masking fluid, you apply some soap at the tip. So maybe even like a bar soap or I think dish soap, um, coat it all over the tip and then make sure it's not dripping with soap and then you can dip it in and it will actually keep the bristles pretty healthy not like perfect but it won't damage them as much as it would if you were to just dip it in right away which I always did and my brushes were always poop after that so I'm just gonna wet it to take that kind of glue off of it and then I'm just gonna go put some soap on it and I'll be right back okay so I have soap on the tip it's not dripping or anything and then I'm just gonna dip it in and I'm just going to, let's make like a little flower. Okay, I know you can't really see it. I'll see if I can go a little bit more up close. And I feel like this is the one I've used before. The amount that you want to apply, you don't want it too, too thick where it's like pooling in any areas, areas but you don't want it so thin that it'll be hard to lift. Um, so make sure it's just not pooling, but you do want like a, a decent layer, like a, a thin paint. Okay. And you can kind of see it. See, well, it's hard to see. See when I tilt it to the light and then you're going to wait for that to completely dry. And I think this is the one that's kind of yellowy. Once it dries, it kind of turns a bit more yellowy and to touch, it feels like this rubbery consistency. So I'm going to let that dry and then I am going to... Um, go rinse off my brush really, really well, and we'll come back and we'll paint over it and give it a good test. Okay, so now that they're dry, I don't know if you can see this, it's kind of a bit more yellowy and it just feels a little bit tackier um, to the touch. And this one also feels dry, hopefully it's ready. <laughs> and now you can start painting over it. So I'm just gonna take a brush of mine and we're just gonna do like a wash over it. So I don't, I don't know what colors here we're gonna do, but gonna take like a blue and you can just start painting so my tip for this part is when you're painting over it um, make sure not to like scrub because that might lift some of the the paint up or not the paint sorry the masking fluid up you don't want to scrub with your brush because that will lift that masking fluid so I'm just being really gentle but this is what is great is that if you want to do a really nice background instead of having to go delicate delicately around whatever you're trying to keep white on the paper you can just do your really nice washes and then you can, you know, tap in your darker colors and it just, it should leave the white paper once it's completely dry. So there's that one. Let's do, I don't know, green over here. This one's fairly easy to see. There might be a little bit of green here because I did touch it earlier and um, <laughs> it, it, it may, it was, it wasn't dry yet. I, I was just impatient. So I'm just going to do that and hopefully on this paper I'm pretty sure it's gonna work well so now the next step is you got to wait for it to completely dry before you lift the masking fluid so make sure your watercolor is completely 100% dry and then we will come right back okay now that it's dry we can lift up the masking fluid so you can do it delicately with your finger or you can also take an eraser and try so let's hope this works I haven't tried this one so I'm kind of nervous I'm just gonna take my kneaded eraser and I'm just gonna gently see if I can oh it's working if I can lift it what about my finger finger works too and you're just gently rubbing it back to lift that masking fluid. This one feels a little bit harder than the other one usually is. So I'll show you. It might actually work better with like a not a kneaded eraser. See how it leaves the white of the paper so nicely? Okay, this is a good option. I haven't tried this pen in years, so. I mean, this is a new pen, but I tried this brand, the masking fluid pen a long time ago, and I remember not being too fond of it, but the only thing you have to be careful of if you do your finger is that maybe the heat from your fingertips while you're rubbing might lift some of the color of your um, watercolor or the moisture from your hand 
and activate some of that color and then smear it onto the white. So that's the only thing you have to be careful of with using your fingertip. This is a little bit trickier with the eraser. I need a better, I wonder if I use like a pencil eraser if that will work. Okay, this works better just cause it's a bit tougher. Kind of a pain to lift okay let's try and lift this one and see this one i always do with my finger and this is like rubber almost you can even pull it like that like this one works so well the pen's good for precision for sure but i i don't know i think i prefer the windsor newton liquid one just because it's so easy to remove but like look at that see and then, yeah, this one, you just got to keep going. I wonder if I have to go thicker with this one to make it lift, like do another coat. <laughs> yeah, this one I'm getting a little bit frustrated with. But it works. You just got to be patient. Anyway, so that's how you use it. So now I'm just going to quickly do a painting showing you how I would use masking fluid. Okay, so for this painting, I wanted to paint uh, a couple daisies and just do a really blurry green background. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just sketching out my flowers lightly with my pencil. So when you apply the masking fluid over pencil, when you lift the masking fluid after the background's done and everything, it actually takes up some of that pencil markings that you left on the paper. So it's, it's nice that it kind of lifts it up so you don't really have to erase once you have lifted up the masking fluid. But even so, just start by drawing your sketch lightly just so you don't have a lot of graphite left on your paper. So then once you're done your sketch, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your masking fluid. I'm gonna be using the Windsor & Newton masking fluid just because this is the one I like the best. And you're just gonna apply it over the whole flower that you're gonna to want to paint. So in this case, white later. So I'm doing daisies, which have white petals, um, which is why masking fluid is perfect for this. Because if you painted a background, you can't really paint with white watercolor over top. You can't layer it. You'd have that green um, first layer underneath. So this just keeps it nice and white. This works for any color. If you wanted to paint a pink flower, or a yellow flower, whatever, it's just this way you won't have to layer anything because it is a transparent medium. You put a different layer on top of say green, like a green background, it's going to change the color of what you want your flower to be. So this just blocks out that area of where you want to paint your flower and keeps it white. So you get a really nice um, pure color of whatever you're going to make the color of your flower. So I'm just applying the masking fluid to the whole flower and I'm going to do it to the stem and the leaves as well. And like I said, you don't want a really thin, thin layer um, just because then it might be harder to lift, but you also don't want a thick, thick layer where it's going to take forever to dry. Um, a kind of a happy medium and you will notice that it is completely dry when the whole thing is kind of like the solid yellow. I find it a little bit more uh, lighter or whiter when it's wet and then you'll notice an obvious difference of when it's dry. So wait till it's completely 100% dry. See there you can see it's a little bit more yellow and then you can apply your background. So I'm just doing like a light wash of green to start with a larger brush. Again, I'm being really gentle with my brush strokes, especially over top of the masking fluid, just because I don't want to lift any of that masking fluid. And then I start applying my color and that rubbery surface kind of repels the watercolor, which is nice. So you know where you're putting it and you can just keep, you know, playing around till you get the perfect background. For mine, once I laid in those darker colors, I actually splatted it with my clean water just to bring in some of those little white specks. I just thought it would look nice. Then we're going to let it completely dry. Once the background is dry, you can start to lift the masking fluid off. You can see how easily you just kind of pull this one. And again, like I said, check your paper first. Make sure it doesn't tear your paper. I find it works really well on Arches watercolor paper, um, but I forget which ones in the past. I think some Paul Rubens paper it was tearing a bit. Uh, so just Definitely test out before you do a whole painting because imagine getting to this part and you're just you have to throw it out because it's torn your paper. So test before you do it. Um, and then you can start painting in the flowers. So it's a daisy. So I'm just doing these light gray shadows on the petals because no flower is completely 
you know, white, but I am leaving some of that white for the highlights on the petals. And that's the beauty of masking fluid. So that's basically it. That's how you use masking fluid. And like I said, there's so many ways you can add these to your paintings. You could use it for a landscape. Um, you could use it just for highlights, a sparkle on the water, anything. It's just, it's really, really cool to use. And even just if you wanted to do some lettering with a really cool water watercolor background wash and you wanted to write something out with the masking fluid and then do a background wash you could do that too just so many uses for it and that's about it so I hope this helped clear up any questions about masking fluid and if you have any more let me know in the comments below I will try and answer them and if you already know lots about this then you can help answer me in the comments or answer the questions in the comments as well and that's about it so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.